so this Saturday morning devotional might be like an extension or part two of that sermon that I gave where I was comparing my neighborhood with the neighborhood that was right next to it, but really only peripherally because I am actually out of town. I'm in Baton Rouge, Louisiana with Karen and Noah and we're visiting her dad and her mom. We're here with her brother and his wife and their two kids. We, many of you may know that Karen's dad was diagnosed just about three or four days into the shelter in place with a incurable, but hopefully treatable brain tumor. And so for the whole time that we've had the shelter in place through, through decisions that we all made together, we decided that to keep him safe, we were going to do our best uh, to you know, stay away. So we Zoomed and then finally after graduation at Cassidy, we loaded up in the car and we came down here to spend some time. So, um, so I'm walking in these, this beautiful, we're in a kind of a, we're renting an Airbnb. We're actually not staying with them. Just in case, you know, we're asymptomatic and we're spending the days in the morning and in the evening going over to their place and we visit in the, in the, in the yard from a distance. So uh, we're staying in this neighborhood. This is a the historic neighborhood pretty near the Louisiana State University. And we've got these beautiful trees that cover entire streets and give you shade. Right. So we see these beautiful trees like this that grow out over the street. They find their way across the road. So last week, I spoke a little bit about the Anglican tradition, yeah, the Episcopal tradition of, of the morning prayer, what's called praying the daily office. And I gave, I pointed you into some directions about how to do that. And I realized that I really, I committed two big faux pas, that there are two resources out there. One has been around a while and the other one's more recent that are just as good in, in a different way than the podcast that I pointed you toward. If you wanted to learn how to pray the daily office, the first one is called Mission St. Clair. Mission St. Clair. And it's a recording. It's a podcast, but it also is written out. And so it sort of follows that daily pattern. And then the second one is actually an, an online resource that was created by a member of the church, uh, Grace Episcopal Church in Yukon. And it's called prayerhaven.com. Prayer Haven. And they do the same thing. And these are both resources that I've used. In fact, when I first became an Episcopalian, I used Mission St. Clair a lot. Uh, Doug Trawick, one of our members, reminded me of Mission St. Clair. And I just was, you know, thought, oh, you stupid. That's, of course you know that one. But I wanted to piggyback on last week because I, I tend to have kind of a, I don't know what to call it, maybe a, a lyrical spirit where I, most of the time I follow the rules, but I'm also someone who's interested in trying to understand what is the heart of what the rules are trying to get at? You know, what's the thing that the thing is pointing toward? You know, there's it's something that, that we, you know, sort of has this external shell, but then I think it's got a heart, you know, the, the so what of something. And I will admit that there are times when following the daily office for prayer, whether it's the morning office or the evening office, that there's times, like I told you last week, that it gets tedious. And so I find myself sometimes doing what I would call a very kind of stripped down, simplified version of the office. And here's what it amounts to. In many ways, the office has two sides of a coin. The first side of the coin is reading scriptures for the day. 
And the second side of the coin is connecting to God in prayer. And so what I've done on some mornings is I've gone to a, I've got an app that shows me what the readings for the day are, the daily lectionary and the Psalms, and I'll read those. And as I pointed out to you last week, you're supposed to read or sing those canticles between each reading. And I've done that, but I've also gotten to a point where I've said, I've said to Jesus, what I want to do is I want to read the scriptures and then I want to listen to a song that I think we both would enjoy. And I'll go to my music library on iTunes or Spotify and I'll pick a song and I'll play it on my headphones and I'll listen to it. And so the first part of the, the daily office, you know, the reading of the scriptures, really becomes me reading scriptures and then kind of listening with Jesus to music that I really love. And then the second half, which is the prayers, is, you know, maybe I'll pray the collect and the Lord's Prayer, and then I'll just do stream of consciousness. You know, I'll just pray. I'll think about what's going on in my life and your lives and uh, lives of people at school and uh, spend that time with with Jesus in prayer. And you know, I don't know if that's wrong. It's not wrong. You know, and it doesn't mean that I don't return to the familiarity of kind of the full, the full-throated daily office morning prayer. It just means sometimes my spirit leads me to do something that's more simple, a simplified version of it. One of the things I love about these old historic neighborhoods near LSU is that the homes are this weird kind of hodgepodge of homes. You've got these really big, huge, stately southern homes. Uh, and then just in close proximity, you've got these little simple, tiny houses. And I feel like sometimes that's, that's the way it is with our piety and devotion in the Anglican tradition. We have the big, huge, stately uh, approaches to God. And we get to experience that at St. Paul's all the time. But sometimes it's also good to acknowledge kind of the simplicity that's available to us. Um, it reminds me of that scene in the Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade when Indiana Jones has to pick which cup was the chalice of Christ? And is it gonna be the really fancy bejeweled cup? Or is it gonna be the really simple one? And the person before him picks the really elaborate cup to his own peril, and then he picks the really simple cup. And it's the right one. Uh, maybe there's evidence that there's both. I had a spiritual director, uh, Julianne, and she was, she wasn't an Episcopal nun, but she was as close as you could get. She was an oblate in uh, a religious order with the Catholic Church. And she and I would argue, we would argue about my time in prayer because what she kept trying to push me and challenge me to do was, she said, look, in the mornings, if you want to tick things off your list, you know, like you read all the scriptures that you're supposed to read and pray all the prayers that you're supposed to pray to be a good priest, she said, fine, do that. Do that in the morning, she said. But what I want you to do is I want you in the evenings, I want you to find some time, place alone, and I want you to just sit in silence and acknowledge Jesus' presence with you and then just be with him. Don't feel like you have to do or accomplish anything. Just be with him. 
And so we would kick this around, and at one point, and she always was pushing me on this. Don't feel like you have to accomplish something. Just be, sit in the midst of his love and his care for you. And that's where I think at one point I asked her, I said, well, if I have an album that I really like, or a taco shop that I really like, can I listen to that album or go to that taco shop with the spirit of Jesus, the presence of Jesus? And she said, yeah, absolutely. And so that's my encouragement to our community this week is find those times when you can completely drink from the elaborate cup of our daily office. But then also remember there are days when all God really wants from you is to release yourself from your obligations, from your expectations, and to be with Him. To be in His presence, to acknowledge His friendship with you. I want to close this by praying the, this is the collect from the previous Sunday, which you know, an observant Episcopalian, and again, observant, what does that mean? Uh, would find time every day to revisit that prayer, and through that repetition, creates kind of a, a mental tattoo or a, or a terrain, like, like the ruts of, of the wagons in the Oregon Trail. You create that in your mind. And I want us to pray uh, the prayer for this week. An answer prayer 
All the bullies finally started to care Out of focus, well it came in Sort of clear It dispelled the cynics Complainers Meet me in the middle of the night Just once, Lord, in the pale moonlight Break bread, have that beer It gets a little lonely in the dark down here Jesus wants to touch my face Shake up my mind in the strange places It's extreme 